beloved bird, my fellow pilgrim ringing, I hear thee singing, as I sang of old. Over 400 years ago, the adventurous Portuguese explorers who discovered and claimed Brazil for the crown of Portugal sailed into this picturesque harbor and called it Rio de Janeiro, or River of January, because they discovered it in the month of January, and they believed the beautiful inlet into which we now sail was the mouth of a river. As we pass within the shadow of this gigantic promontory known as Sugarloaf, we wonder if the white men who first saw it could have dreamed that it was destined to become the mighty sentinel of an enchanted metropolis with a population of over a million inhabitants and a reputation of being the most magnificent city in the world. Passenger ships arriving at Rio today literally tie up at the foot of Main Street and immediately become a picturesque part of the skyline as well as a convenient point of egress to the city itself. Rio de Janeiro is not a manufacturing city. Therefore, there is a preponderance of foreign goods on sale in all the smart shops. Nevertheless, foreign influence has not changed the strong allegiance which the Brazilians have for their native continent. They proudly proclaim themselves South Americans, and they very much resent the North Americans' alleged monopoly of the word American. period from 1902 to 1906 witnessed the wonderful transformation from the old to the new Rio, a comprehensive project so boldly conceived and brilliantly executed that there is hardly a landmark of the old city to be seen in the metropolis today. The most unique feature of the clean and spacious streets is the decorative mosaic work that adorns the sidewalks. Almost every block has a pavement with patterns so individual in design that one could find his way about the city by becoming familiar with them. particularly noted for its numerous and colorful parks, which are scattered in picturesque profusion throughout the city. In 1808, the King of Portugal was forced by Napoleon to abandon his country and re-establish his throne in Brazil. When he arrived in Rio, he brought with him, among other things, the first tiny sprouts of the famous royal palms, which he planted here. It was decreed that only members of the royal family might have the privilege of cultivating this particular species of tree. But time and nature have overruled the regal command, and the royal palms that were meant to be the exclusive property of Portuguese royalty are now the common heritage of all Brazil. The outstanding landmark of Rio is Sugarloaf Mountain, and from whatever angle one may view it, it forms a most impressive picture. Swimming is one of the most popular sports in this pleasure-loving city. Consequently, many attractive swimming clubs have been erected along the picturesque shoreline. The architectural designs of these clubs are unusually distinctive and many of them are actual reproductions of famous institutions in Spain and Portugal. Among the many fine boulevards in this city of splendor, the most beautiful is the Avenida Beira Mar, 
with its marble promenade encircling the waterfront for a distance of five miles. As in most countries of South America, the color of one's skin does not always determine one's social standing. As a matter of fact, the racial color line seems to be so thinly drawn that it has become a haven of toleration for all races. Nevertheless, the Portuguese language still prevails. districts of the city there are a number of tiny shops where the more industrious young ladies of Rio earn their livelihood. This is called the butterfly industry in which the colorful wings of butterflies are immortalized by an art that was inaugurated here many years ago. The design is first painted on glass and the delicate butterfly wings which have been carefully assorted for their best colors are cleverly worked into the design and held in place by adhesive tape. Another layer of glass is finally placed over the tape and the wings thus preserved will hold their lifelike colors indefinitely. There are over 700 different species of butterflies in Brazil and they are much larger and more colorful than those of North America and Europe. The completed articles consist of tea trays, vanity and jewel cases, bonbon dishes and decorative pictures designed to glorify the city's landmarks. And needless to say, the predominating design is Sugarloaf, the center of attraction for all eyes that glory in the magnificence of Rio de Janeiro, the city of splendor.